Good evening, Star Pupils. I'm your host, friend, and life coach, Miss Divine Awakening. Okay, tonight is going to be a little bit different. What we're going to do today is we're going to take you on an emotional ride with Miss Divine Awakening. Um, during this detox, I'm doing it for spiritual reasons, and lately I've noticed my spiritual side is, is getting back to me, and I'm becoming more sensitive. And by sensitive, I mean your ability to feel your senses quicker. So that includes even emotion. And just by me um, getting more into my senses, I am more emotional. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Before, if somebody told me the word sensitive, I would shy from because I'm not sensitive at all. You know, it takes a lot to make me cry, you know, things like that. Or even I can handle a lot of the, the troubles of the world. But that's not what it means. Sensitive really does mean the ability to detect uh, your senses. I know it's within myself that I've been really emotionally reserved. It takes a lot to even excite me. It takes a lot. Most things people do, most things people find interest in, I don't. And uh, I don't know if it's part of the uh, resistance of the group think. I don't know what it is, but I just don't find um, them as exciting as other people do. But my, me becoming more spiritually in tune, I'm getting more in tune with my ability to pick up on senses, and that alone excites me. And so... I think that's what I was missing before, the toxins inside of me um, and just the way I was eating or the things I was doing or even like my mind just not able to think clearly because of what I was eating. I know now that that had an effect on my ability to feel my senses to the fullest. And right now I am, so we're gonna go on an emotional uh, ride with me to, to see basically how throughout this 60 day detox, uh, my emotions uh, changed, whether for the good or the better. Um, what I'm starting to see is that I'm, I'm feeling like my emotions are changing for the better. I could be thinking that because I see myself experiencing emotion more. Or it could just be the fact that um, I am just um, more happy with life because I'm connecting to my spiritual side. All right, so um, we're going to start with the first one. And this is my physical side effect of the detox. And that's my hair <laughs> so my hair is naturally curly um, i've been wearing it natural for about three years now um, but recently it hasn't been taken to any of the products that i've been using um, i tried to use the natural stuff when i first went natural the natural products that have the natural um, ingredients to them but they didn't really take to my hair they did at first and then it quickly it wasn't providing enough moisture for my hair. It seemed like I was having to go to things with more and more and more moisture. Uh, like my hair was uh, was so dehydrated, it needed more, more moisture. So um, I kept up in the product. I had to move away from the natural products to get back to the products that um, were stronger, that had chemicals, because my hair wasn't taken to it anymore. Um, but now my hair is um, completely opposite. It's taken to it so good where it's too oily, it's too heavy, the products affect it too much. So now I have to actually go back and uh, start with the natural products again to provide my hair with what it needs. Um, so, so when you're removing the toxins from your body, your body wants to stay that way. Throughout the 45 days, I had a random insight, and that is just me sitting around thinking about how whatever you eat, has an effect on what happens to you throughout your day. It has an effect on how your day will go. And that's something I just know. <laughs> it's something that I know. You, and the only way I can say that you can prove it if you want to say, oh, what, what do you have to back that up? The only thing I have to prove it um, is if you actually try it. If you actually try it, you'll see your proof. Um, and that's, that's all I have to say about that. I, and just to set the record straight, I'm not here to prove anything to anybody. I'm here to tell you about my journey. Whether you believe it or not, that's up to you, but I'm here to tell you about my journey. Let me open up the chapter of my spiritual part um, before the detox of who I was. Um, I come from a religious background that consists of many different religions. And it started off with just, my mom had, a, had five kids and you know, people would invite us to go to their churches and she would say, yeah, they can go to your church. We didn't have a church home. So uh, we'd go to their churches. We went to Christian churches, Baptist churches, Jehovah's Witnesses, the people with the long skirts. We, we, did, we did lots of different religions. Um, and 
each time I, whatever it was that God, Jesus, whatever it was that you need to do to get accepted, um, I did it for each and every one of these churches as a, a young kid, maybe from like seven till, till 11, I was doing that. I got saved a bunch of times. I was baptized a couple of times. Um, I became a Muslim. <laughs> like I, I did all that because I was really, you know, when you just know that there's something greater than you and then you, these places are trying to teach you about it, you do it. You, you, you want to do it so you can get closer to knowing the greatness you feel out there. And then it was just something with me where you, could, you can't just tell me anything. So when I would hear certain stories or have questions because you're questioning what you're reading, you're not just, I, you, I, you can't just blind faith me. Um, now, once I built up enough faith, then you can blind faith me. So um, every time I had a question with religion, basically I was either shunned by the whoever it was I asked a question by, and it was always somebody higher up, like a, a priest or, or a pastor or a Sunday school teacher, somebody who you would feel like, you, like the instructor, you would ask them because they know the answer. Um, basically, if you didn't understand what they were saying or didn't just agree to what they were saying, it was, oh, well, you have to question your faith now because you would believe that if you were a true Christian or whatever the case may be, or a true Muslim. So um, I started just jumping around on religions. I ended up landing on the religion of Islam. And that was the one religion I kind of, I never agreed 100% on any religion. I didn't agree with any religion. Um, but in the religion of Islam, I, was, I came closer to an understanding with that one. I felt like they were strict enough where they understood the um, value of self-discipline, just like I knew. Certain things just resonate within you. You know what's right, you know what's wrong, and you know what it's some kind of a tool. You might not know how, how important it is, but you know it's something you can draw upon every now and then. And that's how I was with self-discipline. I felt like that was um, a key factor in what the religion of Islam, it came in uh, to play a lot, where they try to practice being self-disciplined. I never agreed with everything in that religion either. It came to a point where I just started saying to myself that when people say, what religion are you? I felt like I had to be classified in something. So I would say, um, the religion I agree with the most is, uh, is Islam. So I would say I'm a Muslim, but I don't really believe in everything about it. So yeah, that's where I stand. Of course, I didn't like to talk about religion then. So uh, recently I got into meditation and just me getting into meditation, I would say uh, I started meditating in November of 2016. And just from these couple of months, five, six months, I've developed a relationship with God on a whole different level where I come to an understanding now that I don't need religion. Religion is really just putting a group of people into one framework. And I'm saying framework because it's, it's something that's, because I have been through the different religions, I, I know a lot about them. Each religion is set up where you're going, you're referencing God through this perspective of this religion, of these people within these religion. So, if we all touch an elephant and we touch an elephant on different parts, I touch the tail, you touch the leg, you touch the tusk, you touch the ears, you touch the nose. Um, we're all gonna have different perspective of, of what an elephant is if we only go by our perspective. That's kind of how I view church now considering the fact that I've been in so many different religions uh, in their, their temples or mosques, I, I've done that. So I realized that the reason why I didn't resonate with any one religion is because I needed the, the whole thing. I needed the, the direct perspective of how I see it. And basically religion is just one path to God, not the ultimate path to God. And everybody fights about, the different religions fight about which side is right, what God they're praying to, things like that. But you have to understand that uh, you're always gonna clash because you're judging where you're at religiously or where you're judging which religion is better. You're not a judge. God is a judge. The creator is a judge. You're not a judge. So you're defying the whole very nature of your religion to almost any religion that there is, you're not supposed to judge. So uh, I realized that the best journey for me was what I did through meditation. And you learn that through meditation, 
you don't have to classify yourself in any one religion. What you can be is you can be spiritual. And that's exactly what I am. I'm, I'm understanding religions, all of them. I've been going back to the, the Quran, to the Bible, to the Kabbalah. And I don't, I'm not, I've never experienced a Jewish religion, but I've been going, my religious, my journey, my spiritual journey has been leading me to all these different religions where I understand how they're, I see the perspective in all of them. And through each and every one of them that I've actually been a part of, I'm able to see how that will lead you to have a relationship with God. That will lead you to understand something about God, something wonderful about God. But it does not lead you to the, aware, the perspective you have when you become aware on your own to who and what God is and the power that God has. Right now, I'm spiritual. So when I say I'm doing my spiritual detox and I'm doing that by including spiritual books and spiritual material, listening to spiritual videos, things like that, I am. And that's what I'm doing. I'm also doing things that I learned that... Uh, help to increase this, your spirituality, help to get you more in touch with yourself, more in tune with your higher self. So um, that's why I'm gonna be going camping next week for Mother's Day, because I, <laughs> I've been having a, a strong urge to get back into nature. I've been having that urge ever since I started meditating. And when you tell your friends you wanna go camping and they tell you no because they don't wanna be outside in the woods, okay then you have to do it for Mother's Day or your birthday. So Mother's Day is coming, so I'm doing it for Mother's Day. We're going to be out in the woods, and I get to be in tune with nature. But when you're doing this, you really do feel nature calling you, calling you to come back and see what you missed out the first time. So I'm ready for that. Um, oh, and on the physical side, let's talk some physical stuff now. On the physical side, I realized that literally my shit doesn't stink. That, that's what it is. Literally, my shit doesn't stink. And I'm saying that literally. Uh, when I, I was learning about the detoxes, you know, prepping myself, hyping myself up to do this, knowing I can do this, and just understanding what I was getting myself into when I say I'm going to do a detox for 60 days, I learned that your bowel movement, when you have one, it's supposed to be uh, odorless. When I heard that, I said, yeah, right. It may do all those other things, but it's not going to make it odorless. When I say my shit doesn't stink, it doesn't stink. And uh, it's kid tested, too, because I've had my son come in the bathroom and be like, hey, so will you smell anything? He's like, yeah, the bathtub. Is it time for me to take a bath? I'm like, OK, I passed the test. <laughs> OK, and then another physical uh, aspect or another physical thing I noticed was that um, my weight kind of slowed down on dropping. I was I told you I was getting scared because I was I was uh, losing so rapidly. I'm like, oh, I'm already at 125, but it kind of stopped at 124, 125. It's, it's like right there. And I'm saying stop because when you paranoid about something like that, you check it often. So I was checking it like every day and it, it's kind of stopped at around that point. So yeah, I'm good. And I like how I look at, at 125. This is like what I was in high school. Yeah, what I was in high school. But and another physical is my period came back. Today is actually day 45. Uh, the last video I did, I did it like two days after the fact. And I literally got my period the day I, I was recording. And I told y'all last time that for my first period, it came a couple days early. This one, I was only off my period for 15 days and it came back. So it came back quickly. Um, like, I don't know what, whose schedule it was on. It wasn't on my schedule, but it came back. And it lasted for three days. So the first day, um, it was moderate. It, was, it started off light, then it was medium type flow. Second day, it was medium type flow. Um, and the third day, it was barely anything. And then the, that, was, that was just it. I did not notice that it was coming because I didn't, you know, I wasn't feeling sleepy, moody, any of that. Even if I probably had anything going on, like I, I started, I had a, uh, a breakout. It was like two, three bumps, like just right there on that side. Um, even when I did that video, but the rest of my face was clear. So I should have known that something was going on there, but I'm looking at it like part of the detox process. And it is because it's the period. But that day that um, I was shooting is the day that I broke out right there. And my it was because of my period. That was the only indication I should have had that my period was coming, but I had just had it. It hadn't been the full amount of time yet, so I didn't expect it was coming back. But um, it didn't last that long, and it was very light. So 
we may see if I get another one. <laughs> so many periods. I didn't expect that in a 60 day journey. OK, <laughs> but um, a spiritual thing I ran into that I was excited to discover was the fact that was the fact that when you change yourself, that's when you change your world. Now, I love the song by Michael Jackson, um, you know, I'm searching for a man in the mirror. I'm asking him to change his ways. I'm not going to sing it. Y'all know that song. And that song, <laughs> that song, I just used to love it. I didn't know why. I didn't know if it was a beat. I used to love it, but I used to always hum the lyrics. Never knew what it said. And then I opened my business up, and the day I got my letter in the mail saying that my business was official, Mrs. Divine Awakening, Divine Awakening, Inc., <laughs> that my business was official to officially licensed in Illinois. Um, I just turned on my music, started blasting my music, and the second song that came on was uh, Man in the Mirror. And for some reason, I sat back and I listened to the lyrics that time around. And when I heard the lyrics, I was like, oh my God, like, yeah, it's speaking to me. So it had been speaking to me for a long time, and not just me, a lot of people. I don't know if people actually sit back and listen to lyrics outside of I'm searching for the man in the mirror. Um, ask him to change his ways, like really listen to that song, you see how what it's trying to tell you, Michael Jackson was trying to tell us something. He was trying to tell us that if you change yourself, you do change your world and you literally change your world. Literally change yourself and you will change your world. It's that, it's that clear cut, but we look at it as just lyrics to a song. We don't look at it as if I try it, will that happen? And but we should have because it resonated with a lot of us for, for, well, me forever. Ever since I heard that song, it's always been a song that's always caught my ear and that I always liked. Um, but they were saying something that now I'm able to listen to, which was, when you change yourself, you change your world. And I'm saying that because I see how my life has changed. I see how my thinking has changed, where my thinking, um, if something bad happens, I can think about, I know exactly how that happened because I know what I was thinking about versus something good happens or even something happens out the blue. I know that, well, I have been, you know, just thinking positively. So of course, more positive things are going to come. That's just the way it works. And so me realizing that really changed my life spiritually because I know I can stay at that level if that's, if that's what I want to do. I know how I can get to that level. I know what types of things can move me to that level. And speaking of changing your world, my mother is on day, what is it, 10 of her detox. And she already did her apple diet for seven days. She did do it. And she's on day 10 now of her, um, of her journey for her spiritual detox. And she is doing it for spiritual reasons too. Um, and my mother is one of the last people I would have ever expected to do a detox. Now, when you, you know, you talk to people who you love, try to tell them about the good things you're learning, try to tell them about what has been changing you, what will help change their world. You try to share good knowledge with people and they don't want to listen. Nobody wants to be told what to do. They want to do exactly what it is that they want to do, no matter how good your results are. Um, however, I didn't preach to my mom. I didn't tell her nothing. I, I, I kind of got tired of preaching to people when I was telling them about everything else I was um, learning and what I was doing because of what I learned. And you get tired of being rejected, so you just stop preaching. And I spoke with somebody about this, and he said to me, it was my uncle, my uncle said to me, you just got to show them. And I said, that's damn right. That's why I said, I'm not trying to prove anything to anybody. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show everybody. That's why you're on this journey with me. So um, I just started living the proof, being exactly who I am now because of the choices I have been making, because I've been getting, going down my inner spiritual path, um, finding myself inward. So doing that, um, my mom saw, she saw, she knows her daughter. She saw who I became and that inspired her. So she's on her journey and I'm very proud of her. And not only my mother, a couple other people from my family have joined. Little kids in my family have been asking me more about it. And man, if we can get the kids to start detoxing, to learn how to do this stuff from an early start, that's, that's awesome. They're going to live some awesome lives and they're going to be thinking, they're going to be thinking a lot better too. Let that marinate all the way down to your subconscious mind. We can change these kids and we can change our future. They are our future. 
All right, another spiritual aspect that I had. Now this one, um, I'm, if you haven't met my son, he's on one of my videos I have um, just of him talking because he's interested in health and he sees that he's old enough to detect that we've made some changes in our lifestyle. So he's fascinated. He understands, he understands that it's different from his friends, his cousins, people, who, you know, even events we go to that we've been going to for years. Like we already said we couldn't eat pork, right? But now we're saying we can't eat meat. And then now mommy's saying she can only eat apples. And now mommy's saying she can only eat these things and they can't be cooked. So he's getting more information than what he was privy to before because I didn't have the information. So me just living it, I'm showing my son something too. Now, although he doesn't make the best choices all the times, I let him make his choices because he's spitting knowledge at me. He's letting me know when he's making the choice he's making. He'll tell me, I know I should probably have um, a vegetable smoothie, but I don't want that right now. Right now, I just want some juice, but it's orange juice. And this is this brand and the only ingredients is orange juice. So there's no other chemicals in it, mommy. And you hear something like that. Okay, that's fine. Make the choice you're going to make. I'm not going to boss you around and tell you what to do, but I know he's consciously thinking of the choice that he makes. And that's what's important to keep these kids woke, to keep everybody woke. I haven't been able to see auras. The, sorry, I haven't been able to see the colors of auras. And I told y'all that I think on the first video. Um, but during the 45 day part, um, when my son, I asked him to do something, he started crying. He was really upset. So when I told him, I said, come here. And he wouldn't come here. And then he finally came. By the time he came, he was all worked up from crying. I told him, turn around so I can see you. So he turns around and he's just crying. I'm like, what is wrong with you? Why are you crying? All I asked you to do is this. And he's like, I thought you didn't love me anymore. And I'm like, for real? He's like, yeah, but when he's saying this, all I can see is red and pink glowing around him. His aura was just jumping in his face. You can barely even see his face because how emotional he was about it. He was so worked up that every cry, every time he breathed, he, he did a breath like heaving because he's trying to talk and cry. His aura was flashing, it was flashing bright. So I was just focusing on that and I was trying to, that's actually what kept me strong because <laughs> insane, because when he acts like that, you immediately go into the fact that you have a boy. And <laughs> so with that, you don't want him being a crybaby about every little thing. But then you have to remember that sensitive, being sensitive means that you're feeling emotions. And when we tell our kids things like you're being too sensitive, you're a man, you're a boy, we're telling them to stop feeling. We're telling them to stop loving. We're telling them to stop doing a lot of things that are detrimental to finding yourself spiritually. So when they grow up with these problems or they have issues with who they are, it's because of things like that. We're so programmed to tell them what they should and shouldn't do as a male versus female, whatever. But we should let them be exactly who they are. So right now he was crying because he was in his, he was sensitive. He was feeling a certain way because I didn't let him do what he wanted to do. And I yelled at him because I had asked him nicely four times to do the same thing and he didn't do it. Um, but that shows how just how powerful words are too because he was really worked up. I'm, I don't see aura colors like that and I saw his colors loud and clear, red and pink. And so after we talked about that, we talked about unconditional love and how mommy loves you no matter what, then he was fine. Um, he gave me a hug, we hugged it out, he was fine. I looked at his aura this time, I was trying to focus and I, it just, I just saw the clear, I didn't see the color. So I'm assuming he, he was a lot better. And then we talked about it a couple of days, he was fine, but that was pretty awesome. I see now too how, uh, first of all, your breath is that important because the harder he was breathing, that's, that was shooting his aura out. So when they say control your breath and for things like yoga and meditation, then there's a reason for all that. There's a reason for everything. So another thing I notice is that on my spiritual journey is that I'm getting to the point where I'm seeing what toxins can do and what living with less toxins can do for you. So I'm looking at the stuff that even though I'm doing this um, eating right and doing the whole detox tea, I'm still putting things like chemical deodorant on me, you know, and lotion on my hands, things on my lips, you know, things like that. Like I know I'm still putting toxins on me every time I put lotion on, but this is what I have right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to, matter of fact, tomorrow for the last 15 days, I'm going to try to just do no um, lotion. I'm going to do like, I'm going to get some uh, coconut oil 
pure coconut oil, and that's one of the things we can have on the list. So I'm also including that on my skin regimen. That's what I'm gonna be using for moisturizer. I don't know yet what I'm gonna do for my to brush my teeth. <laughs> so hopefully my breath don't stink too bad because I sh I'm not eating, you know, the normal stuff. So, but I'm gonna find a way to brush my teeth even naturally. So I don't know what that consists of, but. Yeah, so I'm gonna try to do that. I'm trying, and I'm not gonna be wearing like this kind of like lip gloss or anything or, or anything on my lips like that. I'm gonna try to find something natural to do. Um, try to, so everything that I'm gonna be adding on to like my natural skincare regimen or just what I do to myself, and I, even my hair products are about to change. So for the next, the last 15 days, I'm gonna go hard where <laughs> I'm trying to eliminate toxins for real, for real. Okay, so uh, we'll see how my emotions are then too. Um, and the last thing on my spiritual journey that I will mention. Um, for this 45 days is that I've noticed that we all have an intuition and that's like our gut feeling that's telling us something. So not only do we have that that we can tap into, we also have the fact that we have a big, there's a big portion of our brain that is used to store everything, information. It's used to store information. And you start to pick up on that with your spiritual journey. Well, when you're detoxing your body, uh, you start to pick up on that. So that's, that's why it's part of my spiritual journey. Because I, I know now that there's another part of me that I haven't really been tapping into, but it's there. And I, I, know, now that I, I know now that I have been, when I have been tapping into it, I never acknowledged what it was. So I didn't practice using it, didn't practice doing it a lot. But now I acknowledge what it is. And it's the fact that we do have that pocket of brain up there somewhere that does that it taps into information we are literally computers we don't need a computer <laughs> we are computers so and i'm saying that because i already have made so many different lifestyle changes where i'm about to homeschool my son before i couldn't wait to drop him off at somebody's school so i didn't so i didn't have to pay child care and so i didn't have to worry about him a babysitter he was fine he's gonna be in school i'll pick him up after i send him to after school and then uh, after care and then i'm gonna go pick him up and you know do dinner all that hang out on the weekends no that's not me now. <laughs> I'm very selective of who teaches my baby, who's around my baby. <laughs> I'm, I'm selective about all that, where to the point where I know the kind of education he needs is from somebody who is going to give him the right information. I already told him they're going to tell you a lot of lies, and I'm going to have to undo it. So I said, why put myself through that? Why not teach him myself? So I'm going to be homeschooling him. His school will start this upcoming school year. He'll be in kindergarten, so we're going to start there. My little sister is doing it with me. We're doing a co-op, so... Um, we all going to be homeschooling, not all of us, but we're, we're going to be homeschooling. Um, but anyway, so I was going over the, the plans I have. I'm trying to make plans for the first six weeks and I was trying to remind myself that I have to keep everything relevant to what's happening for real in life. I want his homeschool to be so realistic where he's not going to ask the question, so what am I ever going to use this? Why is this important? I want him to see right away how it's important and how he's going to use it. So. Uh, what popped into my head was, okay, so when, when we get into geometry, we're gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm going to introduce him to geometry early. I'm going to at least have him know the shapes and different things like the degrees. I don't know. I'm, I'm just, no, I'm going to introduce it to him. Because I said, for some reason, um, these shapes always show up and they're important. Where you, Eventually, you're going to be breaking them down into doing math problems and see, you know, what the angle is, what the degree is. So... I'm like, I'm going to introduce him to that early so that when he sees angles, it's not the first time when he's learning how to use it. So I said to myself, why are they important anyway? They ain't never been, I ain't used, I ain't used a formula for a triangle in I don't know how long or a circumference, nothing to do with a circle. I haven't had to use a protractor, nothing. Why is this important? They just wasted my time. I had to learn all this for nothing. And then as I'm sitting there thinking that I'm scrolling through my videos because I'm at work too. So I'm on break. And I'm um, scrolling through my videos, trying to see what I'm going to listen to when break is over. And what shows up there? Um, sacred geometry. And I'm like, what is, like, I know I've heard about it. I've never actually looked at it. I click on it, and you see nothing but these shapes made out of triangles, pentagons, hexagons, squares, and circles. The same thing that I'm sitting here saying, I never had to use it. Why do we have to learn it anyway? And then you realize that they've been giving us little information. We just, it's up to us to piece out what we're gonna need it for, what we're gonna use it for. And the only way we're gonna figure that out is if we keep reaching for knowledge. We keep trying to figure out what else we can learn about. 
I started researching. I'm still in the middle of researching it to know like everything about it or enough about it where I'm like, okay, I know how we're going to add this in to the homeschool. Me researching it, I saw right away how important it was. And I see now that this homeschool journey I'm doing with my son and my nieces is going to be something that is so beneficial to me and my sister because she's going to be a teacher too. So um, it's going to be so beneficial to just us in general. Our, it's going to take us to a whole nother ball game because I'm able to relearn this stuff and apply it now to the knowledge I know now. So I'm going to be able to relearn it to the point where I learn it. And it's not going to be that hard because I already kind of had a foundation because you know, I was in honors math, I was in honors physics, AP physics, you know, things like that. I'm, I'm a pretty educated person. So I'm not going to be going in this brand new having to learn. Now. I'm going to be going in here like, oh, it makes sense now. That's what I used to do wrong. Now, not only can I apply it, I know how I need to use it because I know what I'm using it for. And I know what direction getting this information is going to put me in. So I'm going to be able to learn at a, a different rate too and I'm going to be learning so much more from the experience I'm going to be getting from providing that bond and education with my son. Um, he's going to know that you can learn every day of your life and he's going to understand why learning is so important. So that wraps it up, Star Pupils. Thank you for joining me on my journey. Today is day 45, so that means I have 15 more days left. I'm excited. I'm ready. I'm going to be going to the woods. <laughs> I'm also still putting together the Mind, Body, and Soul seminar that me and Cats Out Show are going to be doing. It's on June 3rd in the Chicago area. If you're interested, check out, um, check out the Eventbrite. You can check out my website too, which is www.mrsdivineawakening.com. And on the event, it tells you all about the event. You can also go to Eventbrite. I'm going to drop the link in there. So if you're in the Chicago area, please come out and join. Please come out and support. Uh, we'll teach you a lot about your mind, body, and soul and how detoxing is important for all of them. So check us out on Eventbrite for the event. It's on June 3rd. It's a Saturday and it's from 1130 until 3 o'clock. If you would like to have one-on-one -on -one consultations with me as a life coach, we can arrange that too. Check out my website for, to book a one-on-one -on -one consultation. What we do as life coaches is we take people from where they are presently to where they want to be. We want to take them from doing good to doing optimal, to doing exactly what it is that they want to do in life. As a life coach, we want to help people look within themselves. We see the greatness in people and we help them pull that greatness out and help them carry that greatness over with them in their future. So that whatever they're trying to do, whatever they're aspiring to be, they can do that knowing the greatness that they hold within themselves. Good night, star pupils.